Now that you know what an integral is and you know how to compute an integral by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to turn our attention to some applications of integration. And it might not surprise you to learn that the first application will be how to find the area of an irregularly shaped blob, such as the region between two curves. Now, most students, when they first see this problem, think of an approach to solving it that will work, but that makes the problem more difficult than it ought to be. Most people think of breaking it up into a bunch of regions that are clearly representable as integrals, and then adding and subtracting these integrals um, and, and getting you know the, the exact region worked out by adding and subtracting integrals. Um, the, the way that I want you to look at it, though, is to think of it as a Riemann sum. Instead of adding and subtracting a whole bunch of integrals, the problem becomes much simpler when you think of it as a Riemann sum. Not only is it simpler, but it also allows you to uh, use integrals for other applications beyond area. So it's a habit that you need to get into. So in this case, the fellow on the right is figuring out a way to express the region as a sum of six integrals. And when he puts them all together, and he does some algebra, he notices that it really could have been all written as a single integral. And he wants to know what the guy on the left was thinking of, so let me show you how the guy on the left thought of it, because this is the way I want you to think of it. Suppose you take the region, and you imagine slicing it vertically into n slices. Then each part of that region is a vertical slice, that you could imagine as being similar to a rectangle. It's long and skinny like a rectangle. It doesn't have a horizontal top and bottom. But you could see that the area of that region is going to be very close to the area of some rectangle, where the, the height of that rectangle is the distance between the curves at that value of x. And if we imagine then summing up a whole bunch of those rectangles and filling the region, that's our Riemann sum. So. I have to uh, compute the area of that rectangle, and I could call that area A, but I want to reserve A to mean the area of the entire region that we're trying to compute. So I could call it delta A with the idea that if we sum all of the delta A's, it adds up to A. And that's okay, that would be our Riemann sum, but I want to imagine taking a limit where delta A becomes infinitesimally small, and we have an infinite number of them. So instead of calling it delta A, I'm going to call it DA. And we imagine DA to be an infinitesimal amount that we, when we add an infinite number of them, uh, that gives us the exact area. This kind of quantity, DA, is called a differential. It's, it's not a real number, but it's the same concept that we used when we imagined a derivative dy over dx to be a ratio of two infinitesimal numbers. dy and dx are also differentials. Now we have to compute dA. dA is a rectangle, so we multiply the height times the width. And to get the height of the rectangle, since it's a vertical distance, we want to subtract y values. We subtract the higher y value minus the lower y value. The width of the rectangle is just dx. And then if we compute g of x minus f of x and simplify it, we get 7x minus 2x squared. So dA is 7x minus 2x squared times dx. Now some people complain that that might not work when you have a rectangle that extends down into the negative region. But it will always work. If you want the distance between two numbers on the number line, you just subtract the bigger one minus the smaller one. If you want the distance between 5 and negative 3, you subtract 5 minus negative 3, you get 8. It always works. You don't have to pay attention to whether the numbers are positive or negative. Just subtract the larger one minus the smaller one. So now we uh, write our integral. A is the integral of the da's, so it's the integral from 0 to 3.5 of 7x squared minus 2x dx. And the reason the integral grows from 0 to 3.5 is that we're stacking our rectangles from 0 to 3.5, and we're using each value of x in between. So now all that's left is to compute the integral. And we're going to compute the integral in the usual way by finding the antiderivative of 7x minus 2x squared, evaluating it at 0 and 7 halves. 
and that's the arithmetic's easy to do if you recognize that you could factor 7 cubed over 8 and the hardest part is computing 7 cubed and the answer is 343 over 24 any questions <laughs>